Okay, everyone, welcome to SteamCon 2018. As with every year, we've got a nice keynote planned for you, and hopefully Matt won't spoil too much stuff, so we'll keep him reined in, hopefully. Hopefully. He's already got his gold chair ready, so he's... Uh, So, this year's been, there you go, this year's been kind of really, really busy for Steamforge. Um, you know, back in 2017 when we, we had two IPs, Guildborn and Dark Souls, they're kind of two big things. And since then, the company's growth has exploded massively. Um, we haven't always got it right. You know, we've had issues with shipping before you all start attacking me on that one, okay? Um, we've had issues, but we've learned and we've grown, okay? And as you can see, 2019 is looking like a fantastic year for us as a company let alone God Says Coming, which I'm sure you've all been playing next door, hopefully loving it. Um, the models and everything is incredible, and there's going to be a lot of stuff on God Tier in this keynote. Um, we've got our amazing IP partners on this list. There is a few more bits we're going to do in 2019, though, as well. We have got five more licensed IP coming that we've been working on throughout this year, so we're going to reveal them over time. And some more stuff we're not going to tell you about yet, okay? So there is, it is a, it's a busy, busy year for us, okay? So it's going to be exciting, and we're going to grow as a company. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah, so resins, okay? Again, we've had some more difficulties this year with resins. Now, we have fixed, hopefully everyone's managed to grab hold of one of the fathoms. You'll see that's our brand new resin line, uh, the incredibly good detail. We've got the mixture right, we've got happy with the, the process now. And I can confirm today that the, the previous teams now, the skiri is going to be sorted, everything's going to be fixed for Christmas, and the fishermen, the butchers, will be out in the February, okay? So you're going to see them that you've seen, similar to the Indiegogo campaign, but a few tweaks here and there, okay? Now, the main slides now from here on out, I'm going to pass over to my co-founder, Maha, and he's going to take you through, hopefully, exactly what's on the slides. I'm going to hope, <laughs> and what we've prepped for. We don't know, but we'll try. And uh, he's going to take you through what him and the team have been doing, okay? So, Maha. Thank you very much. That's about the most self-indulgent I'm going to get. One of the reasons I wanted to stand here and talk to you is to say thank you for coming, supporting Steamforge as always playing the games that we put out, enjoying the games we put out, never being afraid to let us know what you feel about the games that we're making. It's how we make, right? <laughs> yeah, thanks for the feedback. Um, <laughs> but it's what makes us honest. It's what, what makes our development team one of the, the, the things I'm most proudest about in my entire career, not just uh, Steamforge, but my entire working life is the development team and the creative team that we've pulled together at Steamforge. And, one of the things that you guys probably have noticed is, is this year I've actually taken a little bit of a step back from the, the front-facing social media, always being on Facebook, chatting with people, because I wanted to make sure that you guys actually get to know all of the wonderful people we have working on the game. And it's very easy for me. Someone said to me uh, the other day, was, oh, so you're the guy that came up with Dark Souls. And it's like, well, that's the easy bit. Don't tell anyone. Right? The single idea that kind of creates a game is, is, is incredibly easy. The hard bit is taking that idea, translating it through into a product that is balanced, is fun, is repeatable, is of high quality, has great assets in it, has great miniatures in it, is at the right price point. These are the things that take true skill, effort, and dedication. So what I want to do is rely on my wonderful development and creative team to talk to you about Steamforge Innovations work that we're working on, the Gilball stuff that's, uh, that's obviously uh, going to be super exciting for everyone. And the thing that I'm terribly excited about is God Tier coming out next year. Can't wait to talk to you about that. So I would love you to give a round of applause to uh, the development team, creative team, to show my love for them. <laughs> Obviously, I'm soaking some of that in myself because I need it. So I'm going to start by handing you over to Bryce, and Bryce is going to talk to you about a couple of things that are going on with Steamforge Innovations. We talked to you about that last year, um, showed you a couple of game ideas that were kicking around, and we've got a couple of other things that are kind of exciting, right? All right, so Bryce, everybody.
how do you follow that? That was intense. Um, sorry. What is happening? Um, hi, I'm Bryce. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> Something about farmers, was it? Yeah. Um, so I've been working, uh, so what I'm here to talk about is uh, SFG Innovations. So we announced this last year um, as uh, basically it's a, basically something where uh, if you have a game, if you have an idea for a draft of a game, uh, you can bring that to us and uh, we will uh, help you develop it, help you get it into production and basically just work with you to make it a functional reality. Uh, so last year we announced Ghost Patrol, um, which is something that we're still working on. And uh, this year we're going to talk about. I'm going to talk about a couple of other games that we've got coming out. Um, I think next year. So the first one of that is called Codename Nightmare Fiesta. <laughs> so it's it's super serious. Um, no, so Nightmare Fiesta is basically, it's, it takes up to 10 players and it's a party game. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes to play. Um, it's, you basically t each take on a team of uh, fantasy style characters, so like robots, aliens, zombies, and try and kill off all of the other characters in the game as quickly as possible. Um, it takes, as I say, it's about 20 minutes tops, takes 10 players. Uh, we played it at the summer party uh, at SFG, had an absolutely great time. And uh, I'd really recommend, we've got demos of this game tomorrow uh, from at 9 o'clock, I think. John, is it? Yes. So John is there is going to be running demos. Um, so I really... Give John a clap. Come on. What are you doing? Yeah, so it's a really, really super fun game. And uh, I'd really recommend going and get a demo of it tomorrow because it's, it's, it's great. And the second thing we're going to talk about is called Redline. So Redline is, and <laughs> Perkins has got a wee smile on him now. Um, Redline is a super high octane, uh, super aggressive robot fighting game. Uh, you take on the role of a machinist, and you control a squad of, these are wreckers, which are your robots, and they are fighting over territory and resources. It's a hex-based game and uh, the battlefield and the objectives are super malleable. So, oh, just mid, yeah, look at that render. Look how cool that is. Um, great build up, yeah. Um, so yeah, <laughs> uh, it's super um, dynamic, basically. Uh, the battlefield is very malleable. Uh, the terrain you can play with, you can move about as part of the game. The objectives change as you score them in the game. Um, and that all feeds into the resource system which is, uh, I'm not allowed to talk too much about, but it's super, super cool. Um, and particularly as a guild ball player, something I love is you're constantly having to think. There's no downtime in this game. There's no points at which you are sitting there and you tap clock and you're waiting for your opponent to do something for 10 minutes. You're constantly thinking, constantly having to react and act whenever you attack or move or defend with your, ro with your robots. No. Uh, so, <laughs> you can also get demos of Redline tomorrow. Uh, the man you want to see is Dave, who's sitting right there. Stand up, Dave. Come on. We'll give him a clap. <laughs> so, yeah, I really recommend getting a demo tomorrow. It's a super, super cool system. And, um, yeah, just get a demo. It's great. And now I'm going to hand over to the person uh, you actually want to talk about and the thing you want to hear about. So, you guys like Guild Ball, right? So we're going to start off with the, award, the Master Artisan Awards. Let's have a look. Those people, stand up. Stand up. Steve. Round of applause. So the reason I didn't say their names is because I made the mistake of asking Bryce how to pronounce their names, and I don't speak Irish. 
being the Essex boy I am, being the Essex boy I am, I would butcher these names. So sorry, guys, but also your all work is awesome. <laughs> but this is much cooler. Sorry. So, how many of you guys came to these seminars for the Entertainers Guild? Yeah, there weren't that many people. Some of you are lying. But anyway, this is the one we came up with for design and model, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is Shark, or more precisely, Shark, inverted commas. She will be one of our Entertainers Guild squaddies. So it's a player, or more precisely an actor, portraying the role of Shark in our universe. Next slide. Round of applause for Draft Day. So we all know this is going to be the coolest part of this keynote. I think, anyway. You guys have been amazing during this, uh, this community campaign. It's been the biggest community campaign we've run yet. We have doubled the amount of games reported we had for... Uh, the Union Chains one last year. You've been an incredible, incredible community, really getting into the spirit of this, really pushing it. It's been awesome to see. Now, I'm going to give you the results. Uh, Matt over here is not going to be able to resist jumping in as well and telling you all sorts of things about how these players might work or that sort of jazz, because he's made notes and everything. <laughs> so, the first team, the team that finished first, I know, huge surprise, right? <laughs> now, their player, let, this one's kind of obvious, but the first player drafted in the 2018 Free Cities Draft <laughs> Right, so the really interesting stuff starts now. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> and you guys got... So, Matt's actually missed his cue to tell us all about these players. I've had an idea. Who wants the idea? Who wants the idea? Who wants the thumb police? Kami. So Kami is a little bit unusual. When Sherwin and I were chatting about Kami, um, we liked the idea of a, uh, a footballer who wasn't really a footballer, so she, we gave her guns. <laughs> kind of makes sense, right? So it would be remiss of me when we're talking about Kami, who is a pistolier, to ignore the obvious pun of how great a shot she has. <laughs> No, Kami, Kami has a great shot. Uh, she's not terribly worried about the ball. In fact, she likes killing the ball dead. So, next up, third place. This was really, real, real close because you guys had three different options and you couldn't agree who you wanted. But... My boy, Lane. So, again, showing... And, so... Sherwin and I live down south. We're about four and a half hours away, and we get to travel up to Manchester, and we spend four hours in the car, like most of you guys who travel a long way, talking about nerd stuff. And uh, we get to talk about what Lane can do. And we thought, you know what would be awesome about Lane? Is if we had a striker who had the potential to be a better striker than Shark. And then you gave him to the butchers. Okay, now, the next one. And you have... Here's, here's the big spoiler he's about to release. 
So Edge happens to be someone's sister. Edge is Skaether's sister. She has amazing tight control. She runs at defenses. She'll take on anyone. Ball at her feet, she loves it. So the next one, just before we get there, the next one is possibly going to get booze. Go on. Who's keeping track? You probably know who's coming. Without a shade of the doubt, the biggest shock of the Free Cities draft is this. I have no idea how this story goes. None whatsoever. Um, Matt, do you want to talk about this? That's fair. Okay, so next up. No one knows who this is going to be. Fish, you guys oh, should have played more games. Okay, Matt apparently has now decided he's not talking anymore. So, Masons, well done. Next up, you got. That was, that was really, really, really in keeping with your characters. That was perfect, well done. Yeah. Momentous too, nice work. Okay, and then. Which means you guys got. Matt's over there just trying to decide whether he wants to tell you whether the damage is momentous or not. Does he get momentous damage? Makes sense to me. I'd be amazed if he didn't get momentous damage. I mean, I blame Perkins if he didn't get momentous damage. <laughs> I'd give him like momentous three on the one or something like that. No, Knuckles is a, he's a gentle giant. Why would he need momentous damage? Um, the, uh, the note that I have in my little design notarizer, ears, um, that he, he wants to build a wall, a fence. <laughs> well, we tried. Bless him. Okay, so next up. Undercogs. Who haven't we seen yet that we thought we'd have in about position two? Mr. Jamie Giblin. <laughs> so, Nomad is our full of tricks, super janky winger player, which isn't really giving too much away. Perkins likes me, just not that guy. So, okay, and in dead last. Bless. Give him a good home. Okay. Thanks, guys. This has been an awesome event. Hopefully, we'll see if we can do something like this next year. Would you guys be up for another free seats draft next year? Yeah. Thanks, guys. You're the best. Really well done. Sorry, I'm the boring one. <laughs> so, 
So at SteamCon US, we told you that there was going to be a new type of OP kit coming, which is going to feature blind blisters. So it's going to feature one of four different alternate sculpts. We've already showed a common and a rare at SteamCon US. Today we're going to show you another common, which is Plowman for the farmers. So when we first designed the Plowman, the design brief came from Bryce, who is a farmer. He grew up on a farm. It was like, I want the guy to have a plow share. So obviously we put an entire plow on his shoulder because we don't know what that looks like. And then he was like, no, I want just a plow share. So we're like, okay, we'll have another go. And he's like, that's not what a plow share looks like. No one looks no one likes a plow share looks like Bryce. <laughs> Anyway, that's the, the other comment. So we've also got the super rare as well. Which is Captain Windfinder of the Navigators. So yep, so, these are, so you've now seen the four different alternate sculpts. When they've been out there in the wild for long enough, we've got the capacity to change them out for new ones. So it means this is going to be a pretty exciting OP pack for quite a while. Okay. It's the Minor Minor Guild. <laughs> so, as my fellow developers know, I've been looking forward to this part of the keynote for about six months. This is this is some pretty awesome stuff. <laughs> of all people, Jamie, I didn't think it was going to be you. So first off, we're going to show you who the other crossover player is from the engineers, which is Salvo. We came, we, we came to nicknaming this guy Home Base Salvo because he's got two nail guns that apparently fire drill bits. Uh, and we're also going to show you something which we were debating for quite a while, but actually we're going to go ahead with it. We're actually going to show you the Minor Guild's guild rule today as well. So all six of the miners have that guild rule. Okay, so, so those that can't read, or for those that, for those that can't read at the back of the room, or that are watching on the video, it's secret tunnel. At the start of this model's activation, it may be placed within two inches of its current location. So it kind of works in a very similar way to Vile Swarm's scatter ability, where you measure from the front of the base to the back of the base in front of it. So a bigger base model will actually move further with this ability, and it represents them digging through the ground to get to further places on the pitch. Placement ideas. So we're going to move on to the remaining three miners that we haven't shown yet. The first of which was part of the puzzle in the other room. So this is Spade. She's one of the squaddies for the team, and she is their dedicated striker. She looks like she probably has a two-inch melee zone. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, we're also going to show you the mascot, which is a mole. Are you ready for this next one? No, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> okay, I, I, I've, been, I've been dreaming about this bit. <laughs> Just, no, no, no. Well, okay, you do that afterwards. Right, so last year, you guys thought it was a bit controversial that we put a horse into the game. So... This year, we decided we needed to raise our game a bit more. Let's do the chant, ready? Ooh.
So, that's a tank. Uh, sh yes, Matt. She is on a 50 millimeter base, or she kind of tries to fit on a 50 millimeter base. Uh, the production team were genuinely worried that this model was going to be too big for the box. So, along with, along with me being insanely giddy about putting a tank into the game, <laughs> I'm going to take a map moment for a second, and one of, the, one of the coolest ideas that came out of what happens when a tank's going to drill through the floor, obviously it's going to make such a massive hole that some things are just going to go with it. <laughs> That's all you're getting. <laughs> okay, at this point we're going to hand over to, I think, Matt for God tier. So that's all from Gilball. Thank you. Alex is quite worried. So we told you about God tier last year or the year before? Two years ago. We've been working on it quite hard. And uh, the other day, I, I, as I said, I travel up from, uh, from Essex to come up to HQ and um, I get to walk into the production office to see what I can steal, I mean, to see what samples have come in. And um, lo and behold, there's our pre-production samples and the miniatures. And, and trust me, when you see all 24 champions laid out with their followers, it just sends tingles down your spine. These are some of the best models that we have made. They are some of the models that make me the most excited to play a game. I don't. I know what the game is, but if I didn't know what the game is, I'd want to know what it is. I'd want to play this game. I urge you, if you haven't, get next door tomorrow, grab a demo off of Steve, and actually try this game out, because it's absolutely phenomenal. I love this game. So does everyone else. We got to show it at Depticon, we got to show it at Gen Con, we got to show it at any number of other shows all last year. We showed it at Gamma, which I don't know if you guys know, but Gamma is the uh, Game Manufacturers Association. Uh, meeting this is where you get to meet with distributors and retailers and they're all terribly stuffy and, and kind of very serious business But you show them these models and they're like they're like us. They're like kids. They're like, oh my god This is amazing. When can we have this? When can we have this? The reason I'm sharing this with you is we actually have massive hopes far in excess of what we believe was possible with God tier The excitement that we're seeing with it tells us that when this comes out next year This is going to be one of the next best, uh, biggest things that comes out in 2019 and I'm very pleased to introduce you to Steve, who's going to talk a little bit about, I don't know, Steve, what are you going to talk about? <laughs> Stuff. Steve, everybody. Hey, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough. That's too much. <laughs> Way too much. <laughs> I'll try not to. So... First off, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's come and had demos and has said lovely things about the game that Alex, DC, and now me have been working on, and then also Matt originally and Sherwin. Uh, Impromptu, stay there. Stay there, stay there. No, not fun police. Fun police off for a second. <laughs> one second, because this one can't be trusted. That one definitely <laughs> can't. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> Fun Police is definitely off. That was just like the proof. So, um, Steve's going to be talking to you as taking over as kind of the lead on the project, which was me from February this year, moving up to now, working with DC. It's kind of all I did. Worked really hard. We had the early access, we had some events at HQ, we had various shows that we went to, and it was awesome. Uh, I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for the help you gave us on that. Especially those that made custom boards that are too big now. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> You're welcome. Right, everyone listen to Steve. Steve, behave. I'll try. I'll try. Right, 
So the first thing that we need to talk about is the puzzle. So this is the full image. And what is this? It's something post Kickstarter related. We're not going to give you. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember the original name. I don't think I was. OK, so the original name for these was Apocapups. <laughs> which is really good. And then I believe this was DC that came up with this name. It's peak DC naming, which is Ragnaruffs. And it is, <laughs> it is one of my favorite names in this game. It is. So yeah, where do these come in? Who knows? Find out after the uh, project actually delivers. OK, so let's move on to some final cards. So these are the art design for the final cards, and I am so happy to see these, because they are so much better than the playtest cards. <laughs> so much more legible. I don't have to feel the shame of when someone goes, I can't read this, this text is too small. Hopefully this will be better. Um, and then we have some final tokens. We showed some of these off at Stinkon US. They are very nice. Uh, Tom and Abby and our graphic, our graphic designers have done an amazing job. And then the next thing I want to talk about is the starter sets for God Tier. Now, in terms of starter sets, we had a lot of choices to make, and the decision we've de decided to go with is we're gonna do 1v1 boxes that will come with their own unique theme and a unique themed mat. So this is from one of the starter sets. So yeah, there are multiple. And essentially, it will be a way for you to learn the mechanics, and then also, um, if you are someone that you want both those champions, you can pick that up yourself, and those two will synergize pretty well together. And at this point, I can pass over to Matt Hart, and he's going to talk about some other stuff. Steve, everybody. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before, but we did talk about um, the organized play that we want to do with this. And one of the things that Alex and I spend an awful lot of time talking about is, is what is organized play? And the immediate connotation for organized play is obviously a competitive scene. And uh, I, I think a comp competitive scene is fantastic. You see 110 people trying for the last chance qualifiers. Who, who won in the end? Henry. A round of applause for Henry. Good job, Henry. Who came second? Who got the other place? Who? Darren? Jared. Where's Jared? Oh, I know Jared. Where are you, Jared? Good job, man. Good job, Jared. So comp competitive play is incredibly important to us. You know, we see it with Guild Ball. It will absolutely be incredibly important for God tier, okay? But there are other types of organized play out there. So we're going to focus on three key tiers of organized play. The primary focus for us will be community building. This is a new game. We want to make sure that people are getting involved in the game. They're aware of the game. They're not intimidated by, you know, getting on, uh, sorry, getting involved with, with the game. Um, so it's very much a buy a champion, build it up, learn the game as you go along. And by the time you finish that particular OP kit and you've got your nice little reward, you've actually got a war band that you can kind of move on to the next stage. Next stage being competitive play. So we know what you are like. You love competitive games. You love the, the, the competition of testing yourselves against each other. And God tier, when I play it, it just feels so clean and so, so crisp that it's absolutely perfect for a competitive game. Um, there's no confusion over you know, distances and widgets and this, that, and the other. The game is fast and fluid and balanced. Um, so it's absolutely perfect for a competitive game but it's also been designed from the ground up for campaign play. And this is something... <laughs> I... <laughs> campaign play. Ronan, can we do that in the edit? Edit. Ronan? Ronan? Ronan, everyone? In the edit, yeah? All right. Cool. Campaign play! So where are we at with campaign play? Because I'm sure some of the questions are going to be asked. There are about three different really awesome ideas for campaign play that Alex and I can't quite lock into, and now we've got Steve in the mix, and he's coming near me. 
the thing is with, with the campaign play is we can't lock it in and we can't really talk about it sensibly until we've locked the core game in. The good news is, is the core game itself is pretty much locked. You know, what, 99% locked? There might be the tweak here and there, but nothing dramatic. So if you've been holding off to try God tier because you're worried about the rule change and the seesawing and trying to relearn rules, and trust me, I've, I've kind of experienced this firsthand, now is the time to kind of have a look at it. The, the core rules are locked, and what that does is that gives us a firm baseline for us to start talking about the campaign play. Three core ideas that we have, and there's about five or six derivatives of those three ideas. So our job between now and the next couple of months is actually start zeroing in on what the campaign looks like. What I can do is I can commit to you that the campaign play will be the kind of game, the kind of event that you can turn up to with your mates, and you will have your own individual story. So in the drive home, and you're talking about what happened to you while, you're pl while you were playing God Tier, you won't be going, oh yeah, I kind of went 2-2 and it was all right, because I was like mid-table and yeah, blah, blah. You'll be going, no, I'll tell you what, I had this story and this thing happened and that thing happened and then this print and then blah, blah, blah. And you've got a unique story that the other guys in the car are going to want to share with you, okay? So campaign play is all about the narrative, it's all about the story, and it's all about your personal experience and your growth through, the, through that game, okay? It's not about who wins or loses. Some pictures. Yeah, I can remember this bit. I can remember this bit. Alex is worried because I'm going to say a word. <laughs> so we showed this at SteamCon US, um, and this is the banner for a uh, particular uh, champion and followers. And I thought we ought to show you the champion associated with this banner. I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> How do we get this? I'm glad you asked that, Alex. Thank you very much. <laughs> so what we want to actually do is, is because obviously um, it's the first year out for, for God Tier, and I'm speaking to you very candidly, we want as many people to be aware of this game. We want you guys to go out in your stores and your clubs and get people trying this game. So this will be an exclusive miniature. And won't, trust me, when you see her followers, you, <laughs> you're going to want this miniature. Um, the only way you can get this is through, through the kits and run the events, um, whether it's competitive or, or you know, community building or, or campaign, this is the only way you're gonna get hold of this model. And what we're gonna look to do is, through seasonal play, change the exclusive content within each kit. So this will be a limited chance of getting hold of this model. So absolutely get your friendly local tournament organizer to grab a kit and, and, and set this up and play in this event. And I think at this point, we should do Q&A, right? So before we start with Q&A, I am going to say thank you ever so much for coming. I really appreciate it. I love catching up with all of you. Um, it's my kind of one time a year I get to see some of you guys and play a game. Um, but if there are any questions, we are more than happy to answer or and kind of say something that isn't really an answer but sounds like an answer. What, for delivery? So, yes, there is. No, so, so we are absolutely aiming for, um, uh, it's going to be Q2 next year, early Q2 next year. Any other questions? I'll answer anything, like I've got the microphone. <laughs> Go for it, Pete. I am an old man and there's music playing, you're going to have to shout at me. For which? The Guild Ball. What? Early next year, Q1 next year. So we will get the new tournament kit out and um, whatever we, we change to the OP will come out at that point in time. Hold on, is this like, does that mean that model is really gone? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> You're locked in. For which one? Uh, 
Are you going to do playtest days for the free city draft models? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that we try and do, you know, because we have a lovely um, HQ uh, down the road with, a, you know, if you don't know about the Forge, go and check out the Forge. There was hundreds of you there on Thursday night. Um, and we do run playtest sessions, which are basically NDA controlled. You guys come in, play with the, with the content that we're actually absolutely working on. So, yeah, um, with the rookies, we'll be doing that. So Q2, so I'm going to repeat the question. So when will the rookies be ready? Q2. And will they be in one box or will they be individual? Individual. <laughs> so the question is, to, to kind of stall while these guys approach me, is uh, will the rule book be printable, available uh, in a physical format as opposed to digital? Law book, no rule book. Uh, so it's kind of two questions, well, one's both because we've kind of mentioned it one now because of that. So um, obviously we kick off has had a fantastic, successful product for us. Um, we've had it now over two years, I think it's been a kickoff for that. And we've done, you know, massive units of it, but it is coming to the end of its life kickoff. Um, and we're obviously realizing we need something else in the marketplace. You've just had season four through the digital uh, app and the digital uh, download, but there's still been a lot of demand for a printed rule book. So, so. <laughs> Q1 next year, we are going to put a pack together that's going to be a brand new pack for, for retail stores, uh, for people, which will include a printed rule book in it, okay? So there will be a way to get a very cheap, low-cost printed rule book, which will service that demand. As far as the law book goes, it's still something that's on our list. Uh, me and Matt are quite passionate to do some sort of charity uh, event around the law book. So at some point next year, finally, we will get around to doing that, so, and we'll try to raise that. Uh, but we absolutely don't want to do it outside of a charity event, okay? So what, one of the things about the law is, is Sherwin and I have been working on the law for five years. We had, we basically had the idea of the story arc that we want to tell throughout the course of this game for five years now, and we want to absolutely make sure that that, that story is encapsulated in, in a really digestible format. So we do have our eye on, on, a, uh, on a suite, everything from the start to the very end of, of this particular story arc that we want to tell in one place. And as Rich says, we want to do that for charity and we will pick a, a suitable charity. All right. So how, the question is, Sherwin, how will the rookies be absorbed into their new guilds? Uh, will there be name changes or anything like that? Probably. <laughs> See, this is, this is the part where I don't get invaded by the fun police. Um, so, depends on the guild, is the honest answer. You can imagine that some of the guilds are going to be more strict, I imagine, enforcing name changes, or perhaps not on some of these rookies. Absolutely every single one of them will get an outfit change to match their parent guild they're now part of. So that way, they, that's the whole reason why you only saw a lot of headshot for all of them. Purely because obviously we need to make them feel like they're now part of the team that they've just joined. Pretty much it. Cool. <laughs> will, will we have a page where all the conditions are in one place? On one page, I mean, we'd be insane not to. I mean, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> A decent index? No, that's impossible. <laughs> season four Guild Wars. So when will we hear about season four Guild Wars? 
first part next week. It's a doozy. You're going to love it. Yeah, he just made that face. The best part about the season four, Law, is... The best part about the season four, Law, is when your editor reads it and then goes, Oh, that got dark real quick. And we all remember Blackheart. Um, <laughs> what's the right answer? That is a answer. <laughs> Sorry? It is safe. Give me the dangerous answer and I won't say anything. <laughs> is that the dangerous one? Okay, well, I'm going to stick with the dangerous one. You can go safe. Or you can go dangerous. But yeah, 24. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Kiefer Sutherland. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> what? The question, can you repeat the question? The question was, I made a slip and said, hey, there's 24 champions that we've been working on, and I'm pretty sure that the real answer is, we haven't announced 24 champions. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a, a little bit of a psychic vibe coming from over there somewhere. So the real answer is there is some champions, or there's 24 champions. <laughs> Over the back. Absolutely. So the question is, um, we have an awful lot of projects coming out next year. We obviously have um, a fair degree of commitment, Dark Souls is being the largest one of those that we still have outstanding to, to deliver, right? And that's fair. We have had a couple of setbacks, as you guys all know. We're fairly transparent on what happens during our developments and, and you know, during the production process. What I can assure you is that we are working in a prioritization. So Dark Souls still remains one of our key priorities. And trust me, trust me, if we could get Wave 3 out as soon as possible, that would be awesome. Because um, it just wipes out a whole load of stuff that we need to deal with. Okay, so, so Wave 3 is something that we are absolutely focused on getting out to you. Wave 2 has just been delivered in the last month or two. Um, but, but time marches on, so, and, and work marches on. So what we have is a dedicated Dark Souls production team who are working on the back end of the production. The development itself for Dark Souls is actually complete and has been for some time, so it's largely something that we're waiting for China uh, to kind of play catch up. And when you're dealing with 40, 50, 60,000 units, there's obviously an awful lot of time attached to that. Alex has just appeared, I didn't even see him coming. <laughs> <laughs> what? So everything Matt has said is correct, and I don't disagree with a word of it, but a big one that's important for you guys, anyone at home watching, Projects don't necessarily have a direct knock-on effect to other projects, like they're not all directly related. So the kind of resin holdup that we had didn't stop any of the PVC models being made. They're completely separate things. Having a development team working on a game that isn't working on another game obviously doesn't affect anything. So you have development team working on Dark Souls and then a different development team working on Horizon, for instance. Any holdups for Horizon aren't going to affect Dark Souls, and any holdups for Dark Souls aren't going to affect Horizon. It's a different process. We have various different production partners that work at different things. So if there is a delay with one thing, that will only have a knock-on if part of that process is identical. So don't worry too much if there's a delay with one thing. It's not always going to carry throughout everything else. Mark. So the question is, we haven't mentioned the Miners Guild, which technically isn't a question. A new Miner Guild. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Now, I'm just going to steal Matt's glory moment, because this is one that you sneakily gave away a while ago. I think it was last year. The minor guild that's going to follow the miners is the Lamplighters Guild. <laughs> who will be the minor guild for the alchemists. So for the, those of you who don't know, um, the, the Lamplighters represents one of my greatest Molyneux moments. Um, Pete Molyneux is uh, a guy that I have a lot of admiration for. Um, he made the game Fable and he was very famous for standing in front of the big audiences and making sh** up on the, on the spot. <laughs> and the Lamplighters was one of those moments. <laughs> but Jamie, Bryce and the rest of the guys have actually managed to pull together a brief uh, for Lamplighters that I think absolutely encapsulates everything that I made up in that instant. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, lamp liars. Hold on. Logs has gone. Thousands, thousands in a box. <laughs> I'll clarify this. He, he, yeah, the, the way Matt described it in the keynote could be a bit misleading. So, the actual. Yeah, so the actual champion, it won't be kind of a tournament winning model or anything like that. It will actually be a kit that everyone can, you know, everyone can purchase and that will enable the play. So it will actually be a standard retail skew for anyone to, to actually access. So what we don't want is to put, obviously, some other game systems we've seen, but they have kind of chase rares and stuff like that. That is absolutely not what we're doing. So. I'm not sure I heard the important part of that question. <laughs> you can repeat the question. Uh, so the question was, if we know who the crossovers from the engineers into the miners are, you want to know who the crossovers from the miners into the engineers are. It's not the tank. <laughs> who wants it to be the tank? <laughs> <laughs> All right, any more questions? What armor's the tank got? Five. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> At least five. <laughs> Maybe seven when underground. I don't know. <laughs> when he's got the ball. Has the tank got a kickstart? It would be crazy to not have a kickstart on a tank, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the same way the back blacksmith's got a horse in the game. <laughs> and the way the union or the church got a lion in the game. The thing with Guild Ball and, and, and the universe is the rules aren't that great. Like, you know, the guilds have little kind of sneaky rinky dinks that they can kind of sneak things through. So, yeah, the tank was a bit of a loophole. <laughs> Oops. Right. Is that still in the book? Print on demand, Rich. Yeah. Uh, it absolutely is. Uh, yeah, obviously we've done the season four decks that were insanely popular before, and obviously sold out for restocking. Uh, but the print-on-demand system is is not far. I'm looking for production at the back somewhere. Where is he? There he is. Not. I'm gonna say not far from done. Like maybe um, four weeks. Yeah, about four weeks. So roughly four weeks away. We should have the service up and running. We're literally just doing a test. I think they arrived at HQ like last week, just to make sure the quality is right before we actually send it out. So, yeah. Actually, on that note, guys, just to introduce Paul and Edward. <laughs> so.
So, so we get to sit up the front and do like the cool, kind of fun, rock starry, like having fun with the crowd and actually working on the cool stuff. These are the guys that actually make the stuff and get it to happen and get it to ship, you know, on time. So, uh, thank you, guys. <laughs> Any more questions? Right, so, so the question is about the one to three, uh, season one to three fluff that was largely uh, generated by the characters, right? Yeah. 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 So a lot of what Sho and I talk about when we, when we chat about the fluff is, is how do we provide the connective tissue between the, you know, the, the different story points and, and obviously the opportunity for us uh, while we were exploring the narrative was the character stories and how they kind of built into the overall story arc. When we look to do this, this kind of one and all kind of big story kind of tie up, we're going to look to rewrite a whole bunch of stuff to make sure it pulls in and the narrative feels complete. So um, expect to see that in that, that kind of story book. Anyone else? For Gilball. We will we be able to get the organized play miniatures outside of the pack, Rich. Yeah, so the, the, new, um, the new OP pack, the, we've obviously the rotating models, as Jamie said. We'll be looking to rotate them after a certain amount of time. Now, roughly right now, we've said quarter, um, but we may, do, may change that. Um, will we be able to get the models that are in that outside of that? Uh, more than likely, yes, but only very limited time. So, as you've seen with our Black Friday, we have put this year's retail kind of exclusive stuff like that on then. They'll probably be limited quantities at that time. So, if you look at next Black Friday, you may be able to get them, okay? The thing is, you know, when we have limited models, it's, it's, it's fun to have limited models if you've got the limited model, but if you don't have the limited model and you really want it, it kind of sucks, right? And what we don't want to do is encourage secondary market. So, so yeah, the models will be limited for a period of time and then we'll absolutely make sure that everyone has access to those middle minis at some point in time. Don't pay 100 quid on eBay for a mini. Uh, no, absolutely don't do that. Um, one of the things I missed out on my slides, mistake from me, was something we wanted to emphasize about this new OP pack as well is that we really don't want tournament organizers to just give these models away for first place. Like you, as anybody that's running a t anybody that's running a tournament, you need to you can decide whoever you want to give these miniatures to, and please be very free with that. If you want to give that away to someone that's best painted, the person that would the, it's okay to give it away to the winner sometimes, but if you want to give it to best painted, most sporting, the person that finished in last, the person that just did the funniest thing during the day, whatever you want to give it away to, even just like a, a ran, just ran, yeah, raffle, random draw. So these aren't just for people that win events. So it's for anybody that attends. Guild Ball tournaments, and we want you to use that freely. Jason. Oh, you're asking me about uh, release schedules and stuff like that, aren't you? All right. So the question is, um, we, we obviously know what guilds are coming out immediately with the cooks and navigators, um, but when, when will the lamplighters come? No, Entertainers. Entertainers. Okay. So I don't know is the honest answer. Um, we are going to have to wait and see when the navigators land, but the Entertainers will come out in... What? Next year is rubbish. <laughs> I can. So, so here's the thing, right? <laughs> so the question is, what other IPs do we have lined up next year? Dark Souls has, has been wonderful in terms of uh, creating a de degree of credibility for us as a company. You guys may or may not know, but I had 15, 20 years working in video, video games development and had a fairly large Rolodex of contacts. What I can guarantee to you is we have had the luxurious position of cherry picking 
the very best IPs. So I guarantee that every single IP we come out next year will be one that you have absolutely heard of and is a household name. Last question. Go for it. I didn't answer that. It doesn't count as a question. <laughs> Last question. Yes. So the question is, when are resin, fish, fish and bushes coming out? Absolutely release in February next year. I love you. I love you too. I love all of you. Is that it? Has anyone got one burning question that they have? In the law, yes. drunken seamstress burnt down. Yes. Did anyone die? <laughs> ah. Well, I think if you're a Brewer player, it's good that you just got a new player onto your team be because you certainly have vacant spaces available. Guys, ladies, thank you ever so much for uh, being a wonderful um, group of people to hang out with. It's fantastic. Enjoy the rest of SteamCon. Thank you ever so much for joining us, joining us for the keynote. Thank you to all of the guys who put all this together. And thank you to you for actually playing now games and enjoying them.